Hello, welcome. Uh, in this uh, video, uh, we'll cover the first part of a big lesson here on uh, project cost management with a big focus on one function of it, which is uh, cost uh, estimation. So we'll, we'll learn about the different types of uh, uh, building cost estimates and available sources for uh, its data. Uh, we'll also compare between the different building classification systems that are used to organize the uh, project uh, cost estimate data, and also describe the purpose and practices of quantity uh, takeoff uh, that are used uh, in cost estimation. Uh, so cost management is a very huge area. It's actually covering three main functions within um, the construction uh, practices. Uh, but cost here is mainly dealing with uh, managing uh, part or all uh, of the project costs, uh, and this is done through the design and construction and planning processes. And the goal here is always to remain within the owner budget. Uh, so you start with first uh, estimating the cost uh, of, of the project, and then based on the cost, you will negotiate with the owner. So the purpose of the cost estimate is mainly to win projects and set a baseline estimate and cost baseline with the owner. So that's done in cost budgeting. And then after that, you track your expenses against this cost baseline through the cost control function. And this is kind of a loop feeding in into each other. So you do the estimate to negotiate a budget and you use the budget to track your expenses. And if you see big differences between your actual expenses versus your estimate, then when you do estimate the next project, you would consider that. And this is how you build up your capital, your knowledge capital. This is actually what makes companies successful, is using and learning from their experience. And a big part of the experience is how you, is your cost uh, performance. Uh, so the big function here is estimating. If you do estimating right, then you will set a right budget and you will, you will uh, not have big deviation between your uh, estimated performance and actual performance. Uh, so estimating here is, is, a, is the process of looking in the future and trying to mimic how the building will be built and matching it with a cost estimate and breakdown of the cost. And the key here is you're not, there is no correct answer. I can come up with a different estimate than yours and both will be acceptable because we make reasonable assumptions of how things can be built on site. And because the same building can be built with many, many approaches, with many, many styles. Again, remember management is a, is kind of, as part of it is a style, is an art of finishing and managing and using resources. Um, so there are uh, six type of estimates here, uh, starting with uh, the least accurate one, which is the rough order of magnitude. And it's, of course, we don't like least uh, accurate uh, approaches here, but it it fits well when you don't have a lot of data. Uh, and you go through now the design, different levels of design, with conceptual estimate, then preliminary, then definitive, then the engineer's estimate. Um, and then you end up with the bid level, so it's done here by mainly construction folks uh, who are submitting bids to win projects. So that has a lot of, it should have a lot of details available for after you have the design package in the bed. Um, so we'll cover uh, some types of these in the next uh, uh, videos of uh, this lesson. Uh, this is another way to compare between the different design uh, cost estimate uh, types, uh, starting with the least one, least accurate one, rough order of magnitude up the way to the bed most accurate uh, bid estimate here. Uh, and you can see here, the least accurate one needs the least amount of data and information about the design. And the bid, you need a lot of data, site data, design data, uh, information about the environment around the site and suppliers data, and, and a lot of information you have to collect. Uh, these two curves are conceptual. They just show here the idea that your contingency increases, meaning contingency here is the uncertainty, the budget that you set to account for uncertainty on your estimate. It increases here with the decrease of information you have. 
So the least information you have, the most contingency you should allocate. These two curves here, the first one refers to the projects that have a lot of uncertainty compared to the ones that have less uncertainty. All projects have uncertainties, but this one here refers to projects that, first of all, you're building a new project, so this is what we call the green field plant uh, or green field projects. These are projects that you build, but without any historical cost information or data. So that's risky because you didn't do this project before. And the other type of project is if you're working in existing facilities uh, or buildings, so kind of remodeling of a building. You don't know what's inside the walls. You don't know if there is any hazardous material. Uh, so unforeseen conditions will increase your uncertainty. Uh, the other type of projects here are the ones that everyone loves to work on are green field plants or projects. So you start from a, a clean a lot of land and you build things there are less unforeseen conditions you're dealing with so next here is what type of data we are we can have access to it depends on your situation if you're working in a construction company then the, you should have a lot of in-house cost data with along the number of years this company was uh, in existence uh, the next would be public project uh, uh, cost data. So like this for one example here is published by Caltrans, uh, California Department of Transportation. And they look at all the bids are submitted to in this in their, for their projects and try to organize here on average for every type of work in their projects, how much do contractors uh, bid. So they, they derive the data here from their, the bids that they receive. And then the last source here is proprietary published uh, cost uh, data. And these ones will be the ones we'll, we'll kind of refer to in uh, this course. This books, these groups of books are published by uh, Gordian uh, and they are famously known as RS Means. This is the old name of the, the, the publisher that used to publish these data. Now, all this data, uh, cost data, should be uh, reported, remember in the cost control phase, should be reported following a specific system, meaning that as a specific way to classify, if I get expense for concrete, I should allocate it to a cost code different, different than uh, a cost code for, uh, let's say, carpet. Uh, so I have to organize my numbers here. Uh, you organize your number by following a standard a way to classify the building uh, scope. Uh, so here we, we have Construction Specification Institute and they publish different standard uh, systems to classify your building uh, project scope. Um, so there are two main building system uh, classification systems, Uniformat and Master Format. And both of them are used in cost estimate data. It depends on when are you going to use this uh, system for what type of estimate so we'll see that in future uh, videos uh, but uniformat here organizes the project around the physical parts of the project so if i have windows i have slabs i have columns i have structure systems i have finishes uh, so you look at the project by looking at what components you have in this building master format organizes the project but what, by what type of material is being used and also what type of installations method, installation methods are being used. Uh, so to illustrate more, we have this example here. So if we look at a building, the facade or the exterior wall, um, this wall will have wood framing, fiberglass insula insulation, uh, drywall interior finishes. A lot of materials gets into finishing what you see as just a wall. Now, uh, Uniformat will be representing that wall with just wall, right? We'll call it wall. And we'll give you a cost estimate for this wall by linear foot. Uh, but Master Format will be represented by three divisions. So the classification system will have kind of a hierarchy or divisions. Uh, and it will be represented in Master Format by three separate divisions. Wood, insulation, and drywall. Um, so... Here, this is kind of your 
your uh, uniform man is using component-based or assembly-based uh, approach to represent a building, but master format represents or uses work-based. Uh, what effort is done here is done. You can look at it also by what type of subs. Subcontractors usually describe themselves by saying, I'm division this, I'm division three, I'm con a concrete contractor, I'm, I'm covering division three scope of work. So that's following the master format. So master format have uh, 49 divisions. It started in, uh, uh, in, in, in the old days, it started with 16 divisions, like shown in this left side here. But this one is the divisions following the 2010, if I remember correctly. So you see there are a lot of overlap between the old version and the uh, new one, but up to division 14. And then 15 and 16, they started to be detailed more and more good at, at that time when they started making changes, buildings, the automation system in buildings uh, became more sophisticated. So they had now like uh, automation, electrical communication, internet, like cabling, you know, different, a lot of systems now getting to this, the building and there are actually now a lot of automation in this. So they came up with 49 divisions instead of 16 divisions. And every division of these is broken down further and further. Uh, Uniformat is, is, you can say, is simpler. Uh, it looks at the, the building in three levels. And if the first level here has A, B, C, D, E, F. So six, you can think of it, six divisions main in, in the main level. And then they're broken further more. So you have the substructure shell, interior services, equipment, and then special construction or demo. And... Uh, these are useful when you do uh, estimates based on uh, elements. Like we said from the concept behind uniform is you break down the scope based on components or assemblies within the building, not the type of work needed to finish uh, the building. Uh, so this is just a zoom here into the level. So for example, substructure, the first division in the first level is broken down into foundation and basement construction. And then in foundation, you have the standard, special, and slab and grade. And then uh, the next basement construction here, basement excavation. So maybe you will think uh, excavation is not a product. It's not an assembly. This is assembly. This is assembly. This is an element component assembly. But what does excavation here deliver you at the end? It's not a component of a building. It actually kind of. Um, to create that basement, to create that void, you have to excavate. So you're actually delivering this ba basement space by excavating. So that's kind of a unique or uh, interesting example here. You're considering work in uniform match, which is actually based on assemblies or components. But your component here is the void that's occupied by the basement. And then the walls. The basement walls is the next one. You see here the coding. A, B, C, all, all the way to F, and then A, there is A10, A20, and then A10 is broken down to A10, 10, and then all the way to A10, 30. So that, that's the coding used to label the different parts of this classification system. Uh, the last part we're going to cover is quantity takeoff. Again, this cost estimation is a huge topic. Um, it's very hard to cover it in... 20 minutes kind of video or even series of videos, it can be its own course. So I'm trying to cover as much as I can here, but not in depth. But quantity takeoff is a huge part of cost estimation. It's the key here is you need to be accurate here as much as you can because there are a lot of uncertainties you have to handle with assumptions. So quantity takeoff, this is the area where you have, you need to be accurate here. Uh, so you measure quantities of work and uh, material that goes into finishing uh, the scope you are trying to get a cost estimate for. Uh, so the units used for quantity takeoff are, uh, you know, not, not that many, but uh, the common ones, the main ones, are the area for things like painting, flooring, length, so you can represent like uh, linear items, uh, wiring, uh, structural steel in some cases, uh, concrete uh, curbs, so in, in parking lots you have the curbs that uh, kind of the end, at the edge of the uh, pavement, um, 
and then uh, volume for of course earthwork and concrete weight for rebar and structured steel um, you can do counts of a lot of doors and fixtures and uh, electrical outlets uh, and you can also do estimate by time so how many days you will need a supervision of a PM in this project or even like you need to do estimate of dewatering so how long I need a, a dewatering system to pump out the groundwater and that actually translates into cost. Um, so as an example of quantity takeoff, this is the final product uh, in a building. It's a, it's a footing. But to do this footing, I need to do quantity takeoff of the excavation. Now you have to think about the quantities of how it's actually being built on site. So I cannot just go on this edge here and here and just draw a line vertical and that's my, I'm, I'm trenching. You have to think about the site conditions and the soil. Uh, it, it doesn't stand up vertical like that. No soil stands up, you know, 90 degrees. Uh, you need to have trench boxes if you do that, and you have to account for this in the, in the cost. It's fine to do it like this, but you have to say, I, part of my cost is have to have trench boxes. But let's say that's not a trench. So how, and how if you, with trench box, how are you going to build inside this box? So you have to let the soil to be like the natural angle uh, of repose, that's from the geotechnical properties of the soil. Um, you, can, you can make assumptions if you don't, make, don't know the soil type, but you have to account for that. Uh, a quantity that's just by the box here around, around the uh, footing is completely different and much less than the quantity of the soil when it's actually being done on site. So you're losing money if you're actually doing less quantity. Another thing is the footing is here. So you have to account also for that the workers will need to do the work around the footing, rebar, uh, accessing the footing, doing the foam work. So you have to account for at least a foot from this edge and this side and this side. So if your footing is three feet, two inches, then the bottom of your excavation should be five foot and two inches. Another example of uh, quantity takeoff is the backfill. So now, once I, I excavated using that trapezoidal shape, I built my footing. Now I need to backfill. I can't leave that open like that. So I need to backfill. So you need to have some basic math and kind of figuring out what's the quantity of the backfill here. It's the quantity of the soil that I excavated minus whatever quantity of material I put for my structure. So it's equal to the volume of the cut minus the volume of the footings that I have underground. So there is some quantity takeoff is just a, bu a bunch of geometry that you have to remember how to calculate volume and surface area for and relationship between these volumes and understanding how things are built on site. Another example is when you have a building with a basement. Uh, so you have the building volume here. The difference between this case and this case in calculating the backfill, I'm not considering only the volume of the elements I'm building, I'm considering the volume of the whole building, because that's the void here that will be occupied by the, by the, uh, the basement. So the way you calculate even the same quantity between different projects is, uh, can be different based on the conditions of the project and the geometry you're dealing with. So this is just a couple of examples to show you how you actually do quantity takeoff uh, and what type of units are involved. Uh, you always try to measure uh, your quantities and the units that are used in the cost estimate data. So you have to see what data you have around about structural steel. If it's given in linear foot for different cross sections, then you need to calculate quantities of your structural system and organize it by the different cross sections and measure it in length right some companies do that in a different way different units so they measure it by ton so how much ton or how many ton of steel are you installing and then it's just a matter of just calculating the the, the weight of all the elements uh, beams and, co and columns you're installing add up the the weight and then you have the quantity here so match your quantity of units with the cost data units available to you so a couple of advices here first again mentally build the project before you estimate it so you try to visualize and now we have building information modeling to help with that but a good estimator is the one that actually can visualize mentally 
how this footing will be built. Kind of really imagine, animate how it's being built. And this quote here, I really liked it. It's by this estimator, professional estimator here, CEP. It's kind of a certification that's done by this international organization for cost estimators. For construction, we have the American Society of Professional Estimators. That's a more specialized way to get certified if you really like to do cost estimating. Uh, but you have to build your building, your project mentally, and then you can do estimating that's realistic. Uh, the accuracy of the estimate is dependent on the accuracy of the cost data you're using. So if you think that your data source is not accurate or reliable, then pump up your contingency. Uh, cover the whole scope and avoid any leakage of that scope between the cracks. The cracks here are mainly the lines between the trades or the sub subs working with you in this project. So, uh, and roofing, roofing is a good example. So, who's doing uh, covering the penetration, for example? Is it the one, the, the, the rough uh, carpentry or the uh, framing contractor or the roofing contractor? So, there there are things, tiny things that you have to account for in cost and in general in managing the project. Uh, focus on large items because any mistake in these will, will make you or break you in this project. Uh, try to detail as much as you can of the estimate. Sometimes you don't have the data uh, in in detailed way and you have to use square foot estimates and that's fine, but try to detail as much as you can. The next is digitize and automate your calculations and estimating. So digitize your quantity takeoff. So there are a lot of products now available like on-screen takeoff, uh, building information models can give you quantities and try to automate uh, and digitize your cost estimate here. Uh, so there are a lot of, uh, like the basic thing here is use Excel sheet, right? Just use Excel sheet to automate the uh, formulas you're using uh, in, in your estimate. Uh, include units. Units are important because sometimes you need to convert, have that conversion from, let's say, square foot to square yard. If you're not writing the units, visibly you will not see it, and sometimes you will make mistakes. Uh, double check your calculations. So have someone to read your calculations. And compare your cost estimates to other projects you did before. So make sense of the numbers. Like I did an estimate, and it's a, a tiny you know, framing job, and it turned out to be 10 million. Make sense of the estimates compared to what you have seen before, and review your estimate by the main components of it as a percentage of the total value. So by experience, you will know that probably, you know, mechanical and electrical is about 40-50% of the project estimate. So if I get something different than that, then this project is different. Or maybe I made a mistake. So just these kind of little little tips uh, that I, I learned and also some estimators uh, talk about or share uh, to have a good cost estimate. There is no true or correct cost estimate, but there is a good one that covers the scope and is detailed in a way that is, is easy to track and validate. So we learned in this part, it's a little long, sorry for that, but again, the topic is huge. Uh, so we need to learn here about what type of cost est estimates we can do, what type of uh, data sources are available to us, and what classification systems they use to organize the data and the building scope in general. And we'll describe here some practices and uh, advices um, for doing quantity takeoff. Uh, that's the end of the video. See you in other videos.